Hello viewers and welcome to yet another commentated match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest played out over Octagon. Today we're in for a very special match indeed because this happens to be something like the 7th round of the 4th season of Sam Mann's Warhammer 40k Conquest Octagon WA Online Competitive League. Our two players today are going to be Seth Rosen or IU Death uh, playing the Tau Warlord on she and we also have Travis, uh, aka I Fight Dragons, playing Zarathur High Sorcerer. So it's going to be Tau versus Chaos. The initiative token currently happens to be in the hand of our Tau player, and it seems as though uh, Seth has decided to keep his opening hand. We saw Zarathur take a mulligan, and I believe both players had a reasonably strong opening hand. Uh, certainly not a tremendous number of uh, early game command icon units for Zarathur. Uh, but definitely a decent assortment for our Tau player. We ended up seeing something that Anshi absolutely loves as our very first action of the game. It happens to be the Ksim Yen Orbital City, so he can exhaust that support, move an ethereal unit from the HQ, like Anshi, to a target planet, and ready that unit. So this really changes up the game. I don't happen to have much experience either playing or observing Anshi, but it basically allows Anshi to snipe a unit, bounce back to the HQ, show up at another planet, and uh, either win a battle ability or snipe off additional units, but we also happen to see an Earthcast Technician put out by Seth to planet number 5. That's got one command icon. It allowed him to tutor a card, but it seems as though that ability actually whiffed, and uh, Seth also put a 3-3 Carnivore pack out to planet number 1, so no command icons, but it's a pretty powerful attacker. It's a pretty formidable unit, difficult to kill, and of course, as soon as it happens to be destroyed through any kind of card effect, um, it basically generates three resources for Seth. For our Chaos player, we've got an Ammo Depot. He's presently got four cards in hand. As soon as he gets down to three, he'll be able to use that to continue drawing additional cards. And our, uh, only command icon laden unit thus far happens to be this rotten plague bearers put out to planet number five opposite that earthcast technician and one of two copies of promotion in the hand of our chaos player afforded him the opportunity to trump that earthcast technician at planet number five so it looks like we also see a snakebite thug put out to planet number two that's going to have a command icon it's a pretty formidable unit in and of itself it deals itself damage but for the cost it's uh, hard to go wrong with that one Seth ended up putting out a rogue trader to planet number three, and Travis put a rogue trader to planet number four. So it's going to be quite the interesting mix of command struggle victories here. We finally see Travis pass. Seth is at this point passed. And just assessing our opening layout of planets, planet number one is going to be Farin, which routes non-warlord units. Planet number two is going to be Karnath, which triggers the battle ability of any other subsequent planet. Uh, planet number three happens to be Iridial, which heals units. And planet Planet number four is going to be Yavarn, which happens to put units into play uh, from hand to HQ, whereas planet number five is going to be Ossus 4, which steals resources from one's opponent. It looks as though my presence in this game is actually causing a little bit of malfunction in regard to uh, Octagon's automation here. Our Chaos player did not actually have a Servo Skull for some reason, so the way that we're doing this is uh, basically um, Seth will lock in his chosen planet, and then Travis will enter a number, and then we'll see Seth uh, flip his card here. So this is going to be quite a command struggle victory for Zarathur. Zarathur ended up going to planet number three, and although Anshi can easily ro relocate himself, he ended up touching down on planet number two to trump uh, that snakebite thug there. So it looks like a grand total of one card, one resource for Seth, and one card and four resources for Travis. And given that he's got that gleeful plague beast, Azinch's firestorm, and importantly that ammo depot, it's going to be very, very important that he just ends up with a wealth of different resources here. So Seth ended up pulling in an Ethereal Envoy. It's his signature army unit. It basically attacks, bounces back to the HQ. Uh... <clears throat> 
in the exact same sense that Anshi himself does, we see an ability here, the Rotten Plague Bearers are going to exhaust to deal one damage to this Earthcast Technician, uh, but that damage is ignored thanks to the Ion Rifle here. So we're going to see battles at the first, second, and third planets, and an additional planet based upon where exactly we end up seeing Anshi. The battle ability of the first planet ended up being won by this Carnivore Pack, so wisely, the Snakebite Thug is going to be routed, on she is going to win the battle at Karnath almost assuredly, there's nothing our Chaos player can do to prevent that. Now he's going to have the opportunity to trigger Iridial or Yavarn or Ossus 4. So it looks like his only decent option is to steal a resource, that is indeed what Seth opts to do. That Carnivore pack is now sitting in his HQ, it's not an ethereal so he can't bounce it to any other planets, uh, but we could very likely see this um, orbital city based basically bring on she to, uh, I suppose, our planet number five here, just so he can steal yet another resource, so it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But we've got a battle taking place at planet number three. Zarathur is going to kill off this rogue trader. Uh, absolutely nothing Seth can do in regard to that. Something very interesting to keep in mind is given the presence of this Borkon recruits in his hand here, as soon as he plays that out, if he ends up getting a copy of his signature event, the Ethereal Wisdom, that in conjunction with the Ximian Orbital City uh, is going to be pretty nasty. He could potentially grant the Borkon recruits the Ethereal trait, uh, send it unexpectedly to a planet, hopefully alongside Anshi, to have a you know, a uh, five value armor bane attack go on. We do see the orbital city activate on she. On she goes to Osis 4. He takes a swing, kills off that enemy unit, the rotten plague bears, with an associated promotion. And uh, since on she has an earth cast technician left at that planet, that means he's going to end up generating a resource. So that is a huge economic swing. Uh, even though Travis did so well during the command phase, we just see uh, on she definitely walk away as the victor in regard to the command phase this round. We see our headquarters phase come and go. That's going to be four resources and two cards for each player. We see the initiative token now pass to Zarathur, and we see a splintered path acolyte to put out uh, to planet number four. So that's going to be basically matching the Earthcast Technician's one command icon, but an Ethereal Envoy, the signature army unit for on she is basically going to allow him to trump command at Planet 4. Our new Planet 5 happens to be Elowith, which allows a player to tutor the top three cards of their deck for any one card that they'd like. Put that into play, we see another Splintered Path Acolyte put out to that planet, nicely trumped by the two command icon, zero cost, limited card, recon drone, and now what left to see... At at this point, Seth has six resources, three cards, whereas Travis has five resources and three cards, but he's yet to use his ammo depot. Quite wisely, he puts out a copy of promotion to his Splintered Path Acolyte at planet number five, and three command icons trumps two. We see the Borkon recruits put out to our new planet number one, which is going to be Karnath. Seth uh, has won one first planet, so he's got one red material icon. If he captures Karnath, that's going to be two material icons. Cons, and if he wins either Iridial or Yavarn, he could potentially win the game as early as, as that point. We see another Carnivore pack played out to planet number one, uh, alongside that Borkon recruits, and given this uh, Ximian Orbital City, it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for uh, Anshi to do the same exact thing he did last round, potentially... Um, Maybe go to the first planet, just bully that, make sure Zarathur isn't going to be able to walk away safe as the victor there, and then once he bounces back to the HQ, he can just uh, move on down to planet number four, planet number five, even planet number three, although I think that's very unlikely, and then he can just uh, use his attack to kill off some command unit, win the battle ability since he'll have a unit left sitting there, and definitely just some fantastic play here from Seth, and uh, hopefully Travis is going to be able to pull through and uh, end up taking this one home. Chaos Fanatics for Travis put out to planet number four, we end up seeing a Vior Law Marksman to planet number two for Seth, and now that's zero resources, zero cards for Anshi, so he's all out of tricks,
And uh, now Travis still has three resources, three cards. So this, uh, these Gleeful Plague Beasts are going to potentially be very important, as this the Zinch's Firestorm. So it's a lot of shields, but normally on she has Armor Bane, so these Plague Beasts are going to be able to deal out some damage. Um... The only trick there is they, you know, they're they're really only dealing out a single point of damage, albeit in a big area effect explosion. And uh, if even a single Tau unit gets a chance to attack, like if on she is present, the Borkon recruits here are going to be attacking for four armor bane. The carnivore pack attacks for three armor bane. So I'm just very curious to see will on she go to planet number one or will he go to planet number two? We see a gleeful plague beast at planet number one, and now I'm thinking that Anshi would go to planet number one. The Plague Beast is going to deal itself a point of damage, and unless that Zinch's Firestorm ends up being used as shields, then the Borkon recruits could basically just finish it off. Granted, the initiative token is going to be in Zarather's hands, so I'm I'm quite certain we're potentially going to see both Warlords go to planet number one, just because if Seth manages to keep up this extremely aggressive gameplay then he could potentially end this almost before it starts. But looks like uh, Travis indicated planet number one. Uh, on she, I suppose, did pick planet number five. Interesting choice there. I guess he just really wanted to win command, but I'm uh, perhaps a little bit puzzled as to what his thoughts were there. He did end up drawing a Tense Negotiations, which is going to be very handy, and a Kalyan Strike. So Seth got uh, three cards, no resources. Travis got one card, three resources. Travis's one card was a Rogue Trader, so we definitely don't have a lot of shield cards. We have one one-value shield card for both players, and as we go into combat here, uh, really the only complicating thing is going to be this Kalyan Strike. So it's going to be able to move one or more Ethereal units to a target point. Planet, so on she could shift in to give these units armor bane at an ideal situation but it looks like we see a copy of tense negotiations discarded in order to make that borkon recruits only take a grand total of one point of damage uh, zarather happens to of course amplify the damage dealt out by the gleeful plague beast here so i'm curious as to whether seth is just playing a little bit longer game not really wanting to press his luck uh, with just some early early hyper aggressive play and uh, now it's going to be Travis's opportunity to attack so that gleeful plague beast is going to kill off the uh, Borkon recruits so that unit is just outright destroyed and now it's going to be the carnivore packs opportunity to take a swing of three and it looks like he's picked the snake bite thug as his target so interesting choice there uh, Seth indicates, hold on a moment, it looks like he's going to actually take an action, and is he going to move in on she? We see the carnivore pack re-exhaust, and he instead declares his target to be Zarather, I believe. So Travis indicates he's pondering an action. Will we see this Zinch's Firestorm? He's got three resources in hand. And what exactly are we going to see? Will we see that Zinch's Firestorm? We do end up seeing the Firestorm, but how much is he playing it for? It looks like a one resource, so it's going to be a grand total of two points of damage, and uh, the Carnivore Pack is destroyed, and that's going to be three resources for... Seth. So it looks as though the battle at the first planet is going to be won handily by Zarather. Uh, definitely not what I was expecting by any means, and that's going to allow him to either heal some damage or put a unit into play, or steal a resource, or tutor the top three cards. So let's see. There's no actions from Seth, and it seems as though the, the battle is indeed going to go to him. So I'm just very curious as to what uh, Seth was thinking there, going to that fifth planet. I, I guess he just wanted to avoid the first planet. But what is Travis going to see in regard to battle abilities? 
we end up seeing him trigger Elowith, so he's going to be able to take a peek at the top three cards of his deck, pick any one card that he'd like, add that to his hand. He's already made his choice, and it's going to be the signature support, the Shrine of Warp Flame. So this is extremely handy, because as soon as an enemy unit is destroyed, you can just exhaust this support to return the topmost Zinch card from your discard pile. Uh, at the present moment, that's going to be Zinch's Firestorm, but we could also see something along the lines of Zarather's flamers, which, uh, considering that Zarather has yet to be bloodied, that's just an incredibly nasty effect, uh, being able to potentially attack for three with Zarather's flamers alongside Zarather, and then to sacrifice it to deal another three. So there's going to be a battle at four. It looked as though the Kaoyan strike ended up relocating on Shi, so on Shi himself is going to be able to quite handily kill off that enemy Chaos Fanatics, and, uh, now we see the Ximian Orbital City bring on Shi to uh, planet number five. So that was going to be a resource stolen there by Seth. And now he's also going to be able to kill off this promoted Splintered Path Acolyte. And uh, even though Zarather's HQ is full of units here, um, he's, you know, set up, uh, Seth is set up quite favorably in regard to economy by having uh, three of our different planets here. So, what is Seth going to be able to retrieve from the top of his deck? It's looking like our Chaos player is actually set up pretty damn decently if he can just uh, ensure that things start to uh, not snowball out of control for him. Seth, I'm curious what his other options were, but he ends up seeing a Void Pirate as his uh, chosen card. So we get a Borkon Recruits and an Ethereal Envoy. Definitely the Recruits are nice to see. But another problem here is since we don't have any shield cards in our Tau player's hand, is Zarather plus the Gleeful Plague Beast is 2 damage. That kills the Borkon recruits unless they can be shielded. So that poses a significant problem for Seth here. He's got the Vior Law Marksman. He doesn't have any attachments with which to augment that ranged attacker. It's at the first planet, but without an ion rifle or gun drones or anything like that. It's not a terribly formidable unit. There's no ambush plan platform, nothing to that effect, no honor blade, so we see an ethereal envoy put out to planet number two by Seth, that means he matches this rogue trader, denies his uh, opponent some economy here, we end up seeing a void pirate, and this is going to be critically important put out to planet number five, because all of these different effects, the rogue traders, void pirates, uh, each and every one of them is going to be not just additional resources, but what Seth really needs right now is additional cards. Uh, just to make sure that he draws some sort of shielding effect to uh, potentially just keep him alive here. Our new fifth planet happens to be Aatrox Prime, which can blast a player's HQ or an adjacent planet for one. We end up seeing Travis draw a card thanks to Ammo Depot, and uh, just, you know, right in the nick of time, he gets another Chaos Fanatics here, so it's a two-cost, two-command icon unit. He's not winning command at any planet, and... Uh, you know, Seth indicates that Ammo Depot is going to be clutch this game, and I cannot agree more just because that's putting in serious work each and every turn, being an, an additional card for Zarather here, and that Shrine of Warp Flame is just so incredibly nasty, but... Once again, Seth finds himself completely devoid of resources. Uh, Travis is able to put a Chaos Fanatics into play at planet number two, and that enables his rogue traders to win, uh, potentially an, an extra couple of resources, and that's definitely going to put a little bit of pressure onto on Shi to go to planet number two just to deny his opponent those resources. Note that uh, Travis presently has a Warp Storm, which is going to be absolutely horrifying in being able to kill off, at least alongside Zarather, each and every non-warlord unit that uh, on she has in play and of course the zinch's firestorm cannot just be played but it can also be recurred if it happens to destroy uh, an enemy unit thanks to the Shrine of Warp Flame here, or uh, if he wants to decrease the cost of demons, we could also see the Splintered Path Acolyte potentially recurred, so lots of different effects here. I can only assume that uh, Travis is probably going to be pressing planet number one just to win another uh, potential planet there. It does have a technology icon, so if Travis can manage to win the next two planets, he'll be able to uh, basically... 
uh, win this one. So we see Anshi and Zerather both sent to planet number one, and that's going to be very interesting here. So three planets worth of command, one by Seth, one planet by Travis, and it looks as though Seth is also going to be winning at planet number one. So it's going to be just a moment. Our player is already reconnected, so... The Gleeful Plague Beast, the Snakebite Thug, are both exhausted. The Gleeful Plague Beast is going to deal out a damage to all of Zarathur's units. It's going to be two points of damage to each and every one of Seth's units. But let's see what we draw during the command phase, and let's see how that shakes things up here. Seth is going to be in desperate need of shielding, in need of combat tricks. And then for Travis, things are looking good, but uh, they could certainly look a little bit better. Travis ends up uh, winning his command struggles. He gets a grand total of zero cards and three resources, which means that he could now play his Warp Storm. He could do a Zinch's Firestorm for four damage. And uh, now Seth... All right, well, it looks as though we had yet another hiccup with the Octagon automation. Uh, in regard to Seth had drawn some invisible cards, he generated some uh, invisible resources. So at the present moment, we're supposed to have a grand total of five resources for Seth and five cards in hand. So we've presently done a little bit of a workaround to get Octagon to work uh, after that unfortunate disconnect we happen to see with Seth but that was four planets in total of command one and uh, I'm sure to Seth's just absolute delight he ended up getting a deception two ion rifles and a Kalyan strike so in regard to shields responding to that gleeful plague beast just exploding at the planet uh, we're gonna see a deception and an ion rifle discarded as shields so the Borkon recruits takes no damage on she takes two points of damage and the Vior law marksman ends up uh, basically just taking one so it's going to be able to take a single armor bane shot uh, and I'm just very curious to see how this is going to work out. But Zarathur does a warp storm at planet number one. So no, of none of these units have attachments, but that's going to be two points of damage to each and every one of uh, Zarathur's own units. And then that's going to be three points of damage to Anshi and the other units at that planet. So we see a Kalyan strike discarded, and that means that the Borkon recruits are going to just have one point of damage remaining, but we do have the Zinch's Firestorm, which could deal out uh, two points of damage and uh, basically kill off that Borkon recruits there. And if the Borkon recruits are killed, that means Zarathur is not going to be able to um, basically avoid some sort of four attack armor bane bloodying. So that is just uh, absolutely deadly here. But it looks as though... All right, so yet another little pause as our players uh, discuss a little bit of a, a rules debacle or dilemma. Basically, the way that Warp Storm works is players alternate uh, opportunities with which to shield. So at one point, an enemy unit would have, of course, been destroyed. The Shrine of Warp Flame could have triggered. Zinch's Firestorm could have gone to hand. Uh, and then, of course, Travis could have played it here. So it looks as though that Shrine of Warp Flame is exhausted, uh, but I'm not sure as to whether or not Travis actually retrieved his card. We do end up now seeing that copy of Zinch's Firestorm played out for one resource, but that's going to be 
two uh, points of damage dealt out to that uh, Borkon recruits. So even if he'd have wanted to shield it, uh, Seth would not have been able to. So the Borkon recruits is now killed. That means it's not going to be able to attack for four and uh, end up bloodying Zarathur. So that's definitely not what Seth wanted to see. And now it's going to be basically on Shi's opportunity to take an attack, deal out two points of damage to either this Gleeful Plague Beast or to Zarathur. Uh, but the Xim Yen Orbital City is going to be able to basically bring uh, An Shi back to that planet or bounce him anywhere else that uh, Seth would like. But it looks as though this uh, first planet here is, is almost guaranteed to go to Zarathur. So it looks as though uh, Seth targeted Zarathur for his attack, and uh, that means that uh, Anshi is going to bounce back to his HQ there. So Zarathur is at two hit points remaining, and now it's going to be up to Anshi. Uh, we see the Ximian Orbital City bring Anshi back to the planet, and uh, it's going to be Zarathur's opportunity to attack, since we didn't actually have a combat turn take place with no enemy units. So Zarathur now takes a swing, it's going to be a total of two assigned damage, and Ion Rifle is going to be discarded so that Seth can basically prevent Anshi himself from being bloodied. Anshi is going to take yet another swing at Zarathur, and now Zarathur is uh, officially bloodied, and this is where things start to get very dangerous indeed for our Chaos player, just because if we end up seeing a Viorla Marksman with, oh, I don't know, like an Ion Rifle and Honor Blade or something like that, it could be a ranged skirmish immediate kill, and of course Zarathur now is going to be uh, just in quite a bit of danger from being sent out alongside these gleeful plague beasts here, but it looks like uh, Travis is at the very least going to win the combat at Iridial, and that means this gleeful plague beast is going to be healed, but it's also going to be sent out alongside Zarathur. And now at this point, a Viorla marksman with an ion rifle shooting for four. Uh, armor Bane or not can either guaranteed kill Zarathur, cost Travis the game, or, um, you know, played right. Uh, tra uh, Seth could could win through that effect during the range skirmish phase uh, if we don't see like Shrine of Warp Flame recur as the Inch's Firestorm and then work around it that way but Borkon Recruits and Gun Drones are going to be what Seth drew during the HQ phase that's four cards uh, four resources two cards for each player and uh, we actually saw our Chaos player, interestingly, get two Infernal Gateways. So it's basically the Chaos version of Drop Pod Assault. He's only got a Rotten Plague Bears in his hand with which to Drop Pod into play. It's uh, not exactly spectacular by any means, but perhaps during the Command Phase he might draw something worthwhile. We end up actually seeing an Earthcast Technician played out by Anshi, and now uh, Anshi has two copies of Gun Drones. So, Anshi has the resources to do it, we could potentially see him affix both of these copies to an ethereal envoy, and uh, so long as he can keep it alive, which is going to be the difficult part, being able to do area effect 4, that could kill Zarathur, it could just kill off a ton of different units. So I'm just very curious to see how Anshi is going to go about trying to navigate uh, himself to victory, because Zarathur has two red material icons, he's got two blue tech technology icons, so we could see Zarathur win at planet number one or planet number three, whereas Anshi is going to have to either wait until uh, it looks like it would have to be Aatrox Prime would be uh, Anshi's victory condition. But Borkon recruits go out to planet number one, which is just going to be an incredibly dangerous unit. Uh, if Zarathur is going to have to send himself to like the first planet only to retreat during his first combat action, that's going to be a tremendous amount of damage that the Borkon recruits could deal out. And of course, the uh, Gleeful Plague Beast is going to be killing off uh, these rogue traders potentially, so lots of nasty stuff here. It looks like Seth is trying to figure out how he wants to do this one. So Zarathur is going to 
potentially take a point of damage. All these different units are going to end up taking damage. We do see a copy of gun drones put out to the ethereal envoy, and we see that second copy of gun drones also put out to the same copy of the ethereal envoy. So basically what's actually okay, it looks like it ended up going to a different unit. Uh, so the way that this can work is the ethereal envoy can basically shoot and then leave the planet. It bounces back to the HQ, uh, because I believe that uh, triggering an area effect still bounces the ethereal envoy back to the HQ uh, because it's using the area effect instead of attacking. Uh, anyway, I believe the Ximian Orbital City can then return that unit to the planet. But I'll be curious to see how everything goes out. Definitely Zarathur is going to want to evacuate the premises immediately. Travis indicates that he wants to go to planet number one. The Gleeful Plague Beast, of course, shows up as well. And Anshi, to no one's surprise, also goes to planet number one. And then in regard to commands, certainly we've got just a wealth of command icons here at the first planet. It looks like Zarathur is going to win at planet number one. That's going to be uh, zero cards, three resources for Travis. So these infernal gateways aren't going to be worth anything other than just shield icons. Very unfortunate for him to see. And now that's going to be three planets worth of uh, command for Seth. Seth gets a grand total of four cards, three resources, one of which happens to be the Ennui Prelate. And this is going to be fantastic because it actually augments the attack value of uh, each and every other Tau unit at the planet. So they'll all be attacking for plus one. Uh, we see the action of the Rotten Plague Bearers trigger in order to bloody on Shi. He's now a 1-5, and none of these Tau units actually have uh, armor bane at this point. So we've yet to move into the combat round. And uh, now, as soon as we do so, we're going to see how all the damage gets dealt out by this Gleeful Plague Beast here. So this is going to be the Earthcast Technician killed, and it looks as though we see the Zinch's Firestorm recurred. So that's going to be a grand total of uh, potentially five damage dealt out with that one effect. So the Rotten Plague Bears take a damage, so do the Chaos Fanatics. Uh, for Zarathur, we've yet to see damage assigned to him. That Borkon Recruits takes a point of damage. Uh, we see Infernal Gateways used to spare the Gleeful Plague Beast and Zarathur of damage, but both of Anshi's units are laden with points of damage. We can see a tense negotiations in the hand of Anshi, which is uh, very interesting. We could see like a double trigger of Aatrox Prime, potentially, thanks to the Ximian Orbital City. Uh, well, I guess since Anshi is exhausted, he's not going to be able to use this tense negotiations, but there's certainly a lot of interesting things to see here. As the first action, we actually see the Chaos Fanatics take a swing. That's only going to be for one point of damage. They take a swing at the Borkon Recruits. I suppose that was just to get rid of uh, potentially a two or three value shield card. Quite a wise play, I think, on Travis's part. And uh, Seth calls out for action. Are we going to see the Zinch's Firestorm kill off that Borkon Recruit? Are we going to see the gun drones fire? What exactly are we going to see? A lot of different nasty possibilities here, but what is Travis going to do? We see Travis indicate that he has passed, and I really hope that doesn't really uh, come back and destroy him, but what is going to happen here? I guess it's now going to be Seth's opportunity to attack? And that means that the Borkon recruits or the Ethereal Envoy gets to take a shot. So what is Seth going to do if he plays the Prelate? That's going to open him up to another action window on Zarathur's part. So we see the Borkon recruits attack for four. We could see the Zinch's Firestorm discarded as two shields. So how exactly is this going to work out? It's going to be a grand total of four points of damage, but do we see that Firestorm discarded or not? Maybe he's saving the Firestorm to kill the Ethereal Envoy. The major problem here is that, God, Travis is pushing it super, super close, and if for some reason he had to evacuate this planet, if he wouldn't win... Oh man, that's so dangerous, and like the Gleeful Plague Beast always threatening to cost you the game here. 
So Zarathur is at a single hit point. It's now going to be Travis's opportunity to uh, attack. So no actions from either player. We see Zarathur retreat. So very interesting. He ends up in the HQ. I suppose Anshi could use the Orbital City to go to Aatrox Prime, take a shot at uh, Zarathur's HQ. So here's hoping for Travis's sake that he doesn't actually uh, use an, an action here. So we see uh, an area effect to volley. We see two damage on that Gleeful Plague Beast. Very wise, I think, that uh, Travis chose not to shield against that damage. So we see an Ennui Prelate come into play at that planet. And now is Travis going to make the critical mistake? Is he going to give up this planet? Or is he going to kill off the Prelate? Uh, if he does not win this battle, basically... Travis can use his Zinch's Firestorm to kill the Ennui Prelate, or let the Ennui Prelate come into play and kill the Gleeful Plague Beast. If the Gleeful Plague Beast dies, then Travis loses this planet. Seth is the victor of that planet, uh, but if if he uses that Zinch's Firestorm, he won't have it as shields, and the Orbital City could dump on Shi onto our fifth planet, and it looks like he does use the Zinch's Firestorm, so Zinch's Firestorm is going to destroy the Ennui Prelate, and now it's going to be up to Seth here. Is he going to use the Orbital City to drop off on Shi to planet number five, shoot Zerather in the HQ? There are no shield cards in Travis's hand, and Aatrox Prime could easily cost Travis the game here, so so it looks like uh, the Orbital City brings the gun drones to planet number one. So I guess Seth was uh, not willing to take that risk. I guess, you know, obviously my mistake. Clearly, if the Gleeful Plague Beast manages to survive at this planet, that's going to be the battle won. So clearly, uh, Seth had his, his mind where mine was not. I was thinking a little bit longer than was appropriate because as soon as Travis were to win this planet, uh, he'd actually end up winning the game here. So we saw the Orbital City bring that Ethereal Envoy back to the first planet. It takes its area effect two shot. It does not manage to kill the Gleeful Plague Beast. It bounces back to the HQ. Both of our units would ready, and then the Gleeful Plague Beast would have killed off the Borkon recruits, and there was absolutely nothing that Anshi could have done to stop that. Granted, it was extraordinarily close. If Seth would have been able to kill off that Gleeful Plague Beast, then he could have potentially used the Ximian Orbital City, had it not been used for the Ethereal Envoy to dump Anshi at planet number four, uh, fire Aatrox Prime off, and end up killing Zarathur, uh, because the one card that Zarathur had left in his hand, uh, he would not have had an opportunity to use. Uh, the Gleeful Plague Beast, of course, has no associated shield value, but uh, in the midst of all of my confusion, Seth called out good game, so exceptionally well played by both of our players. An absolutely fantastic match. Congratulations to Travis for an extraordinarily well played Zarathur game, and uh, I think that's just absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much to both of our players for allowing me to capture this uh, just spectacle today and uh, of course thank you for viewing so I suppose I'll just end this video by saying if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already or if you are already subscribed you're always encouraged to share this content as the more people there are that stumble upon these videos the more people might end up giving conquest a try enjoy their experience and of course buy into the game and send the message to fantasy flight games to continue to support this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, feel free to do so through Facebook or on Twitter. And of course, if at any point you'd like to help me recover some of my file hosting and operating expenses, you're encouraged to support my Patreon. A donation of a dollar or two a month goes miles to help demonstrate your support for my channel. So thank you once again for watching and... As always, be sure to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content to come.